What is a chord of a cycle in graph theory? That's what we'll be going over in today's Wrath of Math lesson. You're probably familiar with chords of circles. A chord of a circle, like this orange segment here, is a line segment whose endpoints both lie on the circle. Chords of cycles in graph theory are kind of similar, so here is our definition and we'll check out some examples. A chord of a cycle C is an edge not on C, whose endpoints are on C. So if we look at this kind of funny looking graph that we'll call G, we see that it has two cycles. If we focus on this cycle for a moment, what would a chord of this cycle be? Well, it has to be an edge that's not on the cycle, whose endpoints are on the cycle. For example, if we join E and B, with an edge, this is an edge that's not on the cycle, but its endpoints are on the cycle. Going back to the circle, it's like a line segment whose endpoints are both on the cycle. So that's what a chord of a cycle is. If we look at this cycle over here, this is an example of another chord joining H and J. It's an edge that's not on the cycle. We see this edge is not on this cycle, but its endpoints are on the cycle. H and J are part of this cycle. Drawing just one more example of a chord over here, this edge joining A and D is another chord of this cycle. We could also call it a chord of the graph G, since it is a chord of a cycle in G. Now suppose we get rid of those chords, then this is a cycle with no chords. What do you think we call that? You got it, a graph hole. No, that's probably not what you guessed. You were probably thinking we call it something like a cordless cycle, in which case you are also right. That's another name for a cycle with no chords. There's just one extra little detail we need to mention. You might think, looking over here, when we added this chord joining H and J, we created another cordless cycle this cycle with three vertices, G, H, and J. But a cycle with three vertices, we actually don't refer to as a cordless cycle. Since a cycle on three vertices is a complete graph on three vertices, these cycles can't have any chords, so it's kind of meaningless to call them cordless cycles when no chord could possibly be added anyways. So one more time, a cordless cycle, which we also sometimes call a graph hole, is a cycle of length at least four, so length greater than three. It's a cycle with length greater than three that has no chords. And hopefully both of these names are kind of intuitive. Obviously, cordless cycle makes a lot of sense, and so does graph hole. If we look at this cordless cycle, it very much looks like a hole of the graph. One last thing I want to mention in this lesson. Consider the subgraph of G induced by the vertex set of this cycle. That's the subgraph that contains the vertices of that cycle with their adjoining edges, which is this subgraph here. Notice that this is a cycle graph. Then compare that to what we get when we look at the subgraph of G induced by the vertex set of this cycle, which has a chord. The subgraph induced by the vertices of that cycle is this subgraph here, which we see is not a cycle graph because it has that pesky chord in it. So the point to take away here is that the subgraph induced by the vertices of a cordless cycle or induced by a cycle of length 3 will be a cycle graph. Whereas the subgraph that is induced by a cycle that's not cordless and has at least four vertices will not be a cycle graph because it will have those pesky chords in it. And remember, we're talking about vertex-induced subgraphs. And if you're not familiar with those, check out my lesson on them. I'll leave a link in the description. One other thing to mention, I suppose, would be a non-example. We can see a non-example of a chord with this edge here, joining B and F. It is an edge that doesn't lie on this cycle, and one of its endpoints is on the cycle, but its other endpoint is not on the cycle, so it's not a chord. Both endpoints of a chord need to be on its cycle. And then also remember that chords don't always have to be drawn within the cycle. Of course, this could be 
how you choose to draw your chord for some reason. It looks gross, but it is indeed a chord. It's an edge that doesn't lie on the cycle, and both of its endpoints do lie on the cycle. So that'll do it for today's brief introduction to Chords of Cycles. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet.